and today's presentation and today's program is his way of saying let's start this process it is his brainchild his idea that is coming to fruition here on behalf of our retirees so now i have very great pleasure in introducing the honorable minister of tertiary education and skills training senator fazal karim thank you very much jamal our mc for this morning's in my view, very historic occasion. Mrs. Anita Ramkilawa, Member Board of Directors of the National Training Agency, the Member of Parliament for St. Augustine, Minister of Legal Affairs and Justice, the Honorable Prakash Ramada. I will start by giving you an idea quickly as to how and why I came up with this idea. Why did I want to do this. This has been very personal to me. It is not that we don't have retirees returning to work or who have returned to work or who continue to work. That has happened. It continues to happen. In the National Training Agency, we have a number of persons there who have retired and continue to work. Father and my mother retired. They were 60 yesterday and they were very active. And they started 61 today. And they were just buying newspaper, watching television, maybe harassing each other, going out. But what I saw was not the wastage in a sense of the atrophy of human capital, but more importantly, the talent of our country. If we do not use our faculties, if we do not live purposeful lives, you will find that the retirement money you got, the gratuity you got, that we are so proud to have in one bill might be wiped away because of a health situation. We are here at the Valsin Teachers Training College which has been in existence, this compound and this auditorium and this facility was formally opened in 1979. And it is located in the constituency of St. Augustine. And now I have very great pleasure in introducing to you the Honorable Minister of Justice and Legal Affairs and the Member of Parliament for St. Augustine, Mr. Prakash Ramada. Minister Ramada. Assalamu alaikum. Sitaram, good morning to each and every one. It is always a grave difficulty one faces to come after what I um, consider to be the best orator in Trinidad and Tobago, our beloved Minister Fazal Karim. I ask you to give him a round of applause, please. I want to endorse everything he has said because it has been a trouble to me for a long while now that there is a date after which you are deemed by society of no significance and of no value. Many in this hall today may have experienced that level of what I will call discourtesy, to put it mildly. That your life and your life's work comes to an end because of an artificial date selected by others that you had no choice in the making. And I want to congratulate the minister for his visionary effort today to deal with that. Because the age of retirement really is only a number. There are those who are far younger than you who should be retired. And there are those who are far older who should never be retired. It's about the quality of person. And therefore, I feel vindicated in a large part as I am approaching that period of my life as I go into another phase when you have to start a countdown as to when that date will come. So we are here today to get your views about how we shall treat with this. Of course, there is legitimate reason for having a retirement age. But now that the times have changed and our minister has told us 
about the newness of things, about the brain power requirement, and I think the reality of Trinidad and Tobago bears it fully out. That there is almost a death of the work ethic that we all knew and grew up with. He spoke of my parents. Of course, they have a work ethic that not even I could hope to emulate. And their parents before them like yours. The work and the sacrifices that they had to endure, we do not have a clue about. And the generation next to come will never believe because all they would hear are stories and truly will not understand the sacrifices that they have made our parents to allow Trinidad and Tobago to be where it is today. It is from their work and ours that Trinidad and Tobago, contrary to the, to the many who are naysayers, Trinidad and Tobago is a great success as a country. God has given us every bit of wealth. We have the most beautiful lands, water, and the cleanness of air, and the purity of the heart of those who love this nation. We have the best people in the world that are born here, but now not necessarily grow here or stay here. And the new economy that we are tr trying to create will allow for that space for those who have left to return. But more important, that there is room for everyone. There will be resistance to the, to the removal or the change on the retirement age on a simple premise that if you don't retire, there is no upward mobility in an organization. I could hear them screaming about it now. How short-sighted would it be to assume that the very persons who are resisting it today in a matter of years will reach the very point and have to deal with it. So instead of seeing ourselves as limited and restricted, we must see ourselves as expansive to allow space for everyone at all age, at all experience, because experience is so important. To have heard about the story of being an engineer on engine far is so true. As a young lawyer, I remember I worked with the great Ashford Sinan, and I don't know who might remember him, the great Bengal Tiger, one of the greatest lawyers this country has ever seen, one of the greatest cross-examiners. And he told me as a student then, he said, listen, work real hard for 10 years, and after which it comes naturally to you. And life, your life in the profession will be far easier. And in this room, I could see many who I know who would, without a second thought, know how to deal with issues not from any book, but from the experience. An instinctive reality is, it grows within you that you just know. You just know what to do, how to handle it, and how to deal with it. And we cannot afford to lose it. What an incredible society where we have so many young people going astray. They grow up sometimes without a mother or a father or both. Or even with mothers and fathers biological, but not in the true nurturing way. And we have loving, wonderful souls who have all the values that will allow us to succeed. And we do not allow that space to be created where they come together. Part of my vision, and I'm taking it off script a little bit here, would be to have communities developed. Because there will come a time when many of us will reach a point where our health will fail us and we cannot work. But couldn't we have a community environment created where those children who are parentless or without appropriate parenthood can come together with those who wish to love and to give in one simple compound with religious organizations participating there so that we have the spiritual values, the experience of the old, the wisdom of the ages, nurturing the young. So Trinidad and Tobago will be a better place, more incorporated with each other, that we all need each other, sustain each other. So this today is an incredibly important starting point. And I for one will tell you, you have my full support if you should decide that we should interfere with this artificial number called retirement. Because we need all hands on deck. This country is going to see challenges we've never imagined could come. And I do not just mean issues of crime, no I do not. Those matters are being dealt with and crime has gone down over 50% in the country. I am dealing with the world challenges of global climate change, of an economy that is dependent on the strength of the economies of other places, 
We need to insulate ourselves from these things we have no control over and to fix these things. And that is why the wisdom and the knowledge that you have must be part of that great effort working with the new technologies and the young who will be differently trained as one united force of the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. So, our minister had to leave and unfortunately I myself, I have about seven or eight appointments as we proceed and that we had started and I should be here. I said I must come here as the highest priority and the others will wait, but I must leave as I finish speaking and to know well that we have started something great. This is not just about you returning to work. This is about the society valuing those who have gone before us, who are with us. Because there's a new sense that when long time we used to talk about we, 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 that has turned itself now onto me, what I could get. And forget all those who've contributed in the past and consider them old and decrepit and of no longer of value. This is really a spiritual effort for Trinidad Tobago, bringing itself once again as a united nation, a united society. God bless you all. And for those who organize this, I want to, apart from the ministers whose brainchild it was, congratulate all those who helped organize it. And for all of those who took the time today, because nothing happens without participation. And with participation, there is nothing we will not achieve. You have the commitment of this government to bring the society as one. Against all of those who wish to bring it down, we believe in the long, hard fight to sustain and to build. Against all of the criticisms and condemnation, Trinidad and Tobago is a great nation waiting to happen with you, with all of us. God bless you all. Thank you.